Global Harmonized Systems Safety Data Sheets. This training session is designed to provide information to employees who work with hazardous chemicals and substances. Employers are required to provide training to employees on the new safety data sheets by December 1, 2013. Under the new hazard communication standard, material safety data sheets are now called safety data sheets. All safety data sheets will have a consistent 16 section format. Therefore, the flexibility of formatting has been removed, and classification for health and physical hazards are based on very specific global harmonization system criteria. Manufacturers, importers, and distributors may begin using the new 16 section formatted safety data sheet at any time, but no later than June 1, 2015. Employers are required to maintain copies of all safety data sheets for the chemicals used and or stored in the work area. They should have a system to ensure that all safety data sheets are present and accounted for and to periodically check for the most current safety data sheet when received from a manufacturer, importer, or distributor. Let's take a look at what the 16 parts that are in specific order on the safety data sheet. One is identification. Part two is the hazard identification. Part three would be composition or ingredient information for the product. Part four would be first aid measures. Part five, firefighting measures. Part six, accidental release measures. Part seven, handling and storage. Part eight, exposure controls or personal protection. Part nine, physical and chemical properties. Part 10, stability and reactivity. Part 11, toxicological information. Part 12, ecological information. Part 13, disposal considerations. Part 14, transportation information. Part 15, regulatory information. And Part 16, other information including date of preparation and of last revision. Please note that parts 12 through 15 are not regulated by OSHA, but are part of the global harmonized system. Now let's take a look at each section individually. Section 1, identification, will include the product identifier, which is the product name, code, uh, the name of the manufacturer, distributor with address and phone numbers, emergency phone numbers, recommended uses, and restrictions on use. Section 2, Hazard Identification. This section identifies the hazards of the chemical presented on the safety data sheet and the appropriate warning information. This information will include class or category, such as flammable liquid or corrosive liquid, a signal word, either danger or warning, a hazard statement, such as may be harmful if swallowed, uh, pictograms, precautionary statements, such as do not get in eyes on skin or on clothing, and also describe any hazards not otherwise classified. Section 3, Composition and Information on Ingredients. This section identifies the ingredients contained in the product indicated on the safety data sheet. This information will include the chemical name, possibly a common name, and the chemical abstract service number as a unique identifier. If the product is a mixture, the chemical ingredients will also include a percentage either ex as an exact number or as a range. Chemicals may also be listed as a trade secret as so required. Section 4, First Aid Measures. This section describes the initial care that should be given by untrained responders to an individual who has been exposed to the chemical. The required information consists of necessary first aid instructions by relevant routes of exposure, 
description of the most important symptoms or effects, and recommendations for immediate medical care and special treatment needed when necessary. Section 5, Firefighting Measures. This section provides recommendations for fighting a fire caused by the chemical. The required information consists of recommendations of suitable extinguishing equipment, and information about extinguishing equipment that is not appropriate for a particular situation, advice on specific hazards that develop from the chemical during the fire, such as any hazardous combustion products created when the chemical burns, and recommendations on special protective equipment or precautions for firefighters. Section 6, Accidental Release Measures. This section provides recommendations on the appropriate response to spills, leaks, or releases, including containment and cleanup practices to prevent or minimize exposure to people, property, or the environment. It may also include recommendations distinguishing between responses for large or small spills where the spill volume has a significant impact on the hazard. The required information may consist of recommendations for use of personal precautions, such as removal of ignition sources or providing sufficient ventilation, and protective equipment to prevent the contamination of skin, eyes, and clothing. It will also include emergency procedures, including instructions for evacuations, consulting experts when needed, and appropriate protective clothing. It may also include methods and materials used for containment, and it may also include cleanup procedures. Section 7, Handling and Storage. This section provides guidance on the safe handling practices and conditions for safe storage of the chemicals. The required information consists of precautions for safe handling, including recommendations for handling incompatible chemicals, minimizing the release of the chemical into the environment, and providing advice on general hygiene practices. It will also include recommendations on the conditions for safe storage, including any incompatibilities, and also provide advice on specific storage requirements, such as ventilation requirements. Section 8, Exposure Controls and Personal Protection. This section indicates the exposure limits, engineering controls, and personal protective measures that can be used to minimize worker exposure. The required information consists of OSHA permissible exposure limits, or PELs, and any other exposure limit used or recommended by the chemical manufacturer, importer, or employer preparing the safety data sheet where available, will include appropriate engineering controls, such as use local exhaust ventilation. It will also include recommendations for personal protective measures to prevent illness or injury from exposure to the chemicals, such as personal protective equipment. And it will also include an, any specific requirements for personal protective equipment, protective clothing, or respirators. Section 9, Physical and Chemical Properties. This section identifies physical and chemical properties associated with the substance or mixture. The minimum required information consists of the appearance, physical state or color, odor, odor threshold, pH, boiling point, flash point, evaporation rate, flammability, vapor pressure, vapor density, solubilities, auto ignition temperature, and viscosity. The safety data sheet may not contain every item on the above list because information may not be relevant or is not available. When this occurs, a notation to that effect must be made for that chemical property. Section 10, Stability and Reactivity. In this section, it describes the reactivity hazards of the chemical and the chemical stability information. This section is broken into three parts, reactivity, chemical stability, and other. The required information consists of, under reactivity, whether it is reactive or not, and the description of the specific test data for that chemical. 
under chemical stability, it is an indication of whether the chemical is stable or unstable under normal ambient temperature and conditions while in storage or being handled. Under other, it will indicate the possibility of hazardous reactions, including a statement whether the chemical will react or polymerize, which could release excessive pressure or heat, or create other hazardous conditions. Also, a description of the conditions under which hazardous reactions may occur. It will also list all conditions that should be avoided, such as static discharge, shock, or vibration. It will also list all the classes of incompatible materials and will include lists of known or anticipated ha hazardous decomposition products that could be produced because of use, storage, or handling. Section 11, Toxicological Information. This section identifies toxicological and health effects information or indicates that such data is not available. The required information consists of information on the likely routes of exposure, such as inhalation, ingestion, or skin and eye contact. It will also include description of the delayed, immediate, or chronic effects from short or long-term exposure to the chemical the numerical measures of toxicity, in other words, the LD50 or median lethal dose, description of the symptoms, the description includes the symptoms associated with exposure to the chemical, including symptoms from the lowest to the most severe exposure, and it will also indicate whether the chemical is listed as a carcinogen or possibly a sensitizer or endocrine disruptor. Section 12, Ecological Information. This section is non-mandatory under OSHA, but is a part of EPA under global harmonization. This section provides information to evaluate the environmental impact of the chemical if it is were to be released to the environment. The information may include data from toxicity tests performed on aquatic or terrestrial organisms, whether there is a potential for the chemical to persist or degrade in the environment, either through biodegradation or other processes, results of tests of bioaccumulation potential, the potential for a substance to move from soil to the groundwater, and other adverse effects, such as ozone layer depletion, photochemical ozone creation, and global warming potential. Section 13, Disposal Considerations. Again, this section is non-mandatory, but it is governed under EPA and global harmonization. This section provides guidance on proper disposal practices, recycling, or reclamation of the chemical or its container, and safe handling practices. To minimize exposure, this section should also refer the reader to Section 8. The information may include description of appropriate disposal containers to use, recommendations of appropriate disposal methods to employ, description of the physical and chemical properties that may affect disposal activities, language discouraging sewage disposal, and any special precautions for landfills or incineration activities. Section 14, Transportation Information. Again, non-mandatory under OSHA, but mandatory under DOT and Global Harmonization sections. This section provides guidance on classification information for shipping and transporting of hazardous chemicals by road, air, rail, or sea. The information may include UN number, UN proper shipping name, transportation hazard classes, packaging group numbers if applicable, environmental hazards, guidance on transport in bulk, and any special precautions which an employee should be aware of or needs to comply with in connection with transportation or conveyance either within or outside their premises. Section 15, Regulatory Information, again non-mandatory. This section identifies the safety, health, and environmental regulations specific for the product that is not indicated anywhere else on the safety data sheet. The information may include any national or regional regulatory information of the chemical or mixtures. 
This may include EPA SARA 311312 information, state right to know information, or other regulatory lists. Section 16, Other Information. This section indicates when the safety data sheet was prepared or when the last known revision was made. It may also include the responsible party who created it, a revision list, product label GHS information, and information for HMIS or NFPA. And it may also include abbreviations or other definitions. We will now take a look at an example of a Global Harmonized System Safety Data Sheet. In Part 1, Product and Company Identification, we see the product being hydrogen peroxide 20 to 40 percent, along with the manufacturer, supplier's name, and emergency information. In Section 2, we see the classification of the substance with pictograms, warnings, and other label elements. Section 3, Information on Ingredients, we see that the product is from 10 to 60 percent water. Continuing with ingredient information, here we see that it contains hydrogen peroxide solution along with the CAS number and the percentages. Section 4 gives us the first aid measures. Section 5, the firefighting measures. Section 6, the accidental release measures. Section 7, we see the proper handling and storage of the product. Section 8 gives us the exposure controls and personal protection. Note the components with the limiting values and the personal protective equipment required. Continuing with Section 8, we see the additional personal protective equipment required. and We also note an icons showing a tightly sealed goggles. Section 9 shows the physical and chemical properties of this chemical. Section 10, the stability and reactivity of the chemical. And Section 11, the toxicological information. Here we see Section 12, the ecological information. Section 13, disposal considerations. Section 14, the transportation information. Note the UN proper shipping names and other DOT and IATA information. And it also includes a picture of the placard that would be required for this class. We also see Section 15, the regulatory information. Continuing with Section 15, we note other lists that this product may or may not be on. We also see the GHS label elements that would be found on the container as listed. And in Section 16, we note the other information. In conclusion, here are some things that need to be done. Train employees on new 2012 hazard communication system labels and safety data sheets. This must be completed by December 1st of 2013. Update safety data sheets and labels. Manufacturers have until June 1st, 2015 to have all labels and safety data sheets compliant. Distributors may sell through these products until December 1st of 2015. Update workplace labels and facility specific written programs. This must be accomplished by June 1st, 2016.